Soy is so controversial right now. Some people see it as a nutritional powerhouse and other people think it's the enemy to health. So what the heck, is it good or bad for you? Let's have a look. All right, so first I'm gonna look at the positive health effects of soy consumption that we know of, and then the negative effects, and then hopefully we'll be able to look at both and make a conclusion from there. And the first thing to mention is that unlike most of the plant-based proteins, soy protein is a complete protein. That means it contains all of the essential amino acids your body cannot make, and then therefore needs to obtain from food. Plus it's also very nutritious all around. Um, it is a plant food after all. Now compared to whey and casein protein, uh, soy protein sits somewhere in the middle when it comes to muscle building properties. So it's a very reasonable protein source and soy protein isolate makes a really good uh, protein powder for vegans and vegetarians. Now looking at heart health now, soy foods appear to have positive effects. So in a review of 35 studies, soy consumption lowered the so-called bad LDL cholesterol and raised uh, good HDL cholesterol. Now, another review showed that replacing animal protein with 25 grams or more of soy protein resulted in decreased total cholesterol, um, the bad, you know, the so-called bad LDL cholesterol and triglyceride levels. This is the part where some people argue that um, cholesterol, to total cholesterol doesn't matter or it's uh, LDL particle size that matters. Look, the fact of the matter is that lowering your LDL cholesterol level reduces heart disease risk all experts agree on that. Maybe total cholesterol doesn't really matter, and maybe the cholesterol amount in foods doesn't really matter, but lowering your LDL cholesterol levels reduces heart disease risk. In regards to cancer, the evidence appears mixed. For example, some observational and case-controlled studies link soy intake to a reduced risk of breast cancer, yet others show no protective benefit. One study even connected soy intake to stimulated rapid cell production in the breasts of premenopausal women, possibly increasing their potential breast cancer risk. It's the same mixed findings for men's health and prostate cancer risk. Additionally, the findings of a lot of the studies are further muddled by the fact that some studies use whole uh, soy food sources and others used soy protein isolate or some sort of derivative there. So they're not even comparable in a lot of cases. Possible drawbacks of soy. So like I said before, some people believe that soy is the enemy, and here are the reasons why. Soy protein contains phytates, also known as anti-nutrients. Now these interfere with mineral absorption in your body to a small degree. Like it's not a major issue to think about though, and a lot of other plant-based foods also contain uh, phytates uh, as well, for example, lentils and legumes. There's also some concern that soy isoflavones can interfere with thyroid function and the production of thyroid hormone. From the studies available, it seems like soy has little to no effect on thyroid health in humans in saying that if you have a thyroid issue already, you'd be better off limiting your intake, but in everyone else, it seems to be a non-issue. Some people also uh, stay clear of soy because of its phytoestrogen content. The thought being that phytoestrogens could upset natural levels of hormones in the body. Basically, phytoestrogens are chemical compounds that occur naturally in plants, and they have estrogen-like properties that bind to estrogen receptors in your body. Estrogen, of course, being uh, the female sex hormone. So soy is a notable source of these. The main concerns, such as those around causing acne or reducing fertility in men and women, um, they are unsubstantiated. Uh, it also does not appear to decrease testosterone in men. Plus, if it's soy protein powder you take, well, that's very low in phytoestrogens anyway because of how it's processed. Look, the reason soy is so controversial is because there's so much mixed evidence. If you want to find a study that supports your belief or point of view, you can. One study links high intake with breast cancer risk and the other finds the opposite. It's the same with thyroid issues and testosterone and the list goes on. What we do know is that soy is really nutritious. It's a great plant-based source of protein. And quite frankly, we should all be eating fewer animal products if we're being honest. So eat soy foods like tofu and tempeh and miso and edamame and uh, even soy protein. Isolate is a great source if you want a plant-based protein powder. Soy milk is where I'm not so sure because this is a concentrated source of soy that's high in phytoestrogens and anti-nutrients. If you have a thyroid issue or a fertility issue or something else strongly linked with high soy consumption, I would definitely be steering clear of soy milk. I mean, it might not be a problem and it's probably not a problem in small amounts, but is it worth the risk? Do you need to drink soy milk? No. Besides, oat milk tastes way better. Thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative. And don't forget to subscribe to Healthline's Authority Nutrition YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button below this video.